So uh, today is going to be a very uh, a relatively short uh, lecture again, because uh, I want to give you more time to, uh, to work on uh, your uh, assignments. Uh, if you look in your uh, student package, you'll notice that today's uh, uh, CAD is uh, really uh, really challenging. The the stuff that you do in class, it's the it's the Star Trek symbol. I, I love the Star Trek symbol. I, actually, I don't. <laughs> I find it that's the only out of all the. Out of all the CAD stuff, that's the, the only one that I have to redo every time I do it. If I, if I don't redo it, I will forget how to, how to do it. So it, it's a very challenging uh, piece. It's a, lo a lot of fun. But uh, uh, what I find cool about it is that we're, uh, this, is, this is the fifth week. We're at the fifth week, and you guys are already making very complicated uh, uh, structures like that, uh, that Star Trek symbol. So uh, yeah, I want to give you as much time as you, you can to, uh, uh, to make that. OK, so um, we already, I already gave you some feedback on um, this block right here. Uh, so this is the, the homework assignment that we had uh, on the third week. If you had any troubles with it, and if you don't see why you uh, lost marks, please come and see me and I can give you some uh, more feedback. But uh, here you can see there's many different so solutions to it. And here's our couple of solutions and 3D models that you can t uh, take a look at as well. As I said, I'll give you some more feedback uh, at the end of class on uh, uh, this, this uh, CAD block. But that was actually relatively well done. That's from the third week as well. And we'll discuss uh, uh, the missing line exercise. I'll put that up uh, at the end of uh, class as well. OK. So oblique projections. So we've already studied uh, multi-view projection. The multi-view projection, the benefit of the multi-view projection was that uh, if this is our front view, our front view is going to be true size and true shape. And because it's true size and true shape, that allows us to put uh, dimensions on, uh, on that phrase. And then depending on where we put our, our, picture, uh, our, our picture plane or our projection plane, if we put it here, put it on top, put it on the side, then we can show the different views in true size and true shape. And the reason that's good, again, is because we can put dimensions on it. Okay? And that, uh, that's the reason that multi-view projection is so, uh, is so used, is because you can add dimensions, which allows you to pass information directly to the technician that they can actually make the part. Uh, we spent two weeks on that. Then we looked at axionometric, or uh, we called it isometric projections. What was, the what was the reason that isometric projections were so, uh, so neat or so useful for us as technical drawings? Um, Mackay? Yeah. Um, it helps you like, picture, it helps the person look at your thing to picture what it actually looks like. Perfect. And what were the, do you remember the angles uh, that our uh, uh, isometric uh, view was? The, the, the axes that each of the, what was the angle between them? What was, the <laughs> what was the angle between our uh, uh, what was the angle between all those uh, between our uh, the axes? 120 degrees. Yep, and that's each was 120, which made it isometric. Okay, and there's different types. We looked at there's diametric and trimetric, but we're gonna all you need to know is isometric. Okay, so we looked at isometric, and we looked, and today we're gonna look at oblique, and we're very briefly gonna look at pers uh, perspective uh, uh, projection. Okay, what makes oblique projection Neat. So with the uh, is uh, or let's go back to uh, with isometric projection. The line of sight. If you want to get your sheet out, to remember that sheet that we had all the different types of views on it and all the different uh, categories like a line of sight, uh, uh, projection plane, and uh, uh, object. So go to that sheet. And if you remember for isometric, our lines of sight they were all parallel. Okay. So the we assumed that the observer was at infinity. We said that the, uh, uh, the relationship between the picture frame and the line of sight, though they were perpendicular. But what we did is that we moved the object. Okay, so we moved the object in such a way that uh, we created isometric projection. And that was the difference between this and this. So with the, uh, uh, the multi-view, the object is perpendicular to the line of sight. Here with the isometric, it's being uh, rotated. Now what we do in order to get the oblique projection, which we're going to talk about today, is not only do, now we vary the projection plane as well. So we move the projection plane in such a way that our front view is true size and true shape. Only the front view. Okay, so now this top view and this side view are distorted. The same with this, the front view is uh, true size and true shape, the, the side view is distorted, and the same with this. Uh, front view is uh, true size and true shape, 
and those are distorted. So with the, this isometric, the isometric basically had all three sides equally distorted. This, the, axi or the oblique, has the front face true size and true shape, which is fantastic, but every, all the other faces are distorted. Okay, with this, the um, uh, multi-view of the uh, <coughs> isomet, or the, uh, we'll call it multi-view, that's easier to say, uh, but the multi-view, whatever view we were looking at, always had true size and true shape. Okay, so that's the technical stuff. What does it actually mean? So the best way to go about it is to picture basically what you have there, a block. So a, a block that you would uh, a dice or probably what you drew, you drew in, uh, in grade school. This is how we learn usually how to draw uh, 3D is with a simple uh, block like this. Which block looks most natural to you? What looks like a block, like a, a, a one by one by one block, one unit by one unit by one unit block? Which looks more natural? The middle one. Okay. And that's, and that's the one that we're going to be using. It's, a, it's called the cabinet uh, uh, projection. What you can see is that, the, again, the front face is true size and shape, but actually the receding or the, uh, the depth is half scale. With the cavalier ob oblique, which we're not going to use, but it's just good knowledge to have, that's full scale. So that means for every, uh, if this is, uh, uh, let's say, 5 by 5 by 5, then this here is 5 units, where this would be 2.5 units. So this would be 5 by 5 by 2.5. Okay, but it just naturally looks better. Okay, why am I, why am I, why are we spending a whole lecture on oblique projections? What's the, the reason for it? Can you think of a reason? There's one reason. Basically, there's only really one. Why do we not just keep using isometric uh, projections? Perhaps because um, we have this kind of an idea of um, drawing things freehand mm -hmm. is a lot uh, easier in a sense. It's easier, yeah. What else? There's a you have to see the front face, front forearm. Yeah. The other, the other. Yeah. So that's one benefit is you get to see the front, which kind of goes what uh, what he was saying. It's it makes it easier because you can draw the front face with, and it's true size and true shape. It makes it easier to draw. Uh, you can see more of the part just like isometric, and now you can put dimensions on some of it. Yeah, you, you would never put dimensions on this. You, I guess you could, because I don't want to, again, I talked about before, you can break your rules. But yeah, it makes it easier. And you could put, if you wanted really need to, you could put dimensions in the front face. But what did I say? Um, I'll give you a hint. When you start drawing, uh, like my, uh, uh, my four-year-old son is just starting to draw. And he's, I'm showing how to draw a cube. But he naturally wants to draw a cube like this. So wh what can you say, be said about uh, this type of view? If a four-year-old can understand it, it's how our minds see it. Yeah, it's it's a it's a natural way that we want to see the, the object. It looks it looks nice. It looks natural. It looks what, like it should uh, should look. Okay, it's not technically correct because this is obviously the most technical correct one, or even the isometric one is more technically correct. But it just does, the isometric for some reason does not look right to uh, to humans. We like the oblique generally looks uh, nicer. It's the way that we draw. When you're in grade school, you gra draw a square and then you draw your receding edges and you gra draw your cube. Hey, you were actually drawing oblique projections back in, in kindergarten in grade one, but uh, you didn't know it at the time. Okay, so what you see here, if, we was to, if I was to draw uh, an oblique projection, this is exactly what, uh, what you draw. So this picture a cube, the cube is one unit by you, one unit uh, by one unit. So what you're going to see here is that we've chosen two grids for the front face, two grids for the front face, and only one grid, and one diagonal grid for the uh, receding edge. Okay, and it is that, so what we're using is this projection scale. So here, if you remember, this is half scale. So that's why we only choose one diagonal grid uh, for the receding edge. So two grids by two grids by a uh, uh, half uh, receding edge, or one, uh, one diagonal uh, receding edge. So basically one unit by one unit by one unit cube is going to look like this as an oblique projection. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Again, we'll do an example, and that will probably make things a lot, uh, a lot simpler. Okay, what I want you to get out is uh, this page here. Remember our clevis block that we worked on uh, uh, last week with the uh, isometric? 
We're going to use this page again. If you, for some reason you don't have it, there's a couple more spare copies up here. Okay, so get, get that out. And again, it's not, technically it's not an oblique projection because it's not exactly an oblique projection. It's a kind of a, a way that we can easily sketch an oblique projection. And that, that's what I'm going to teach you uh, uh, today. Okay, the key is the selection of the front face. So if the way that we're generally going to give you this question is we're probably going to give you a, a, a multi-view drawing and then we're going to say from the multi-view drawing create us an oblique uh, uh, projection or oblique uh, uh, drawing. So it, that's easy. Then you just locate whatever the front face is on the multi-view and you make that your front face. If you're not given that though, it's in your best interest to make sure that your selector, uh, your circular, any circular feature is in the front. Because you do not want to be drawn circular features on receding edges. It gets very complicated and very uh, unhappy. Okay, so try to keep your, uh, uh, um, your uh, circular features on the, uh, the front. Okay. Then you're simply going to draw an oblique box. So if you look at our dimensions here, we have our, uh, that's our front view. So there's our front view. Here's our front view. So this is going to be our front face. This is our top. That's going to be our top up here. And that's going to be our right. That's going to be our right hand side right there. So what you're going to do is on the front face, ev for every unit, you're going to take up uh, two grids. So our front face is seven. So two times seven is 14. So there's 14 grids right there. And it's eight plus uh, 3.5. It has a radius of 3.5, that arc. So eight plus 3.5 is 8.5 multiplied by two is 17. Because for every unit, you have uh, using two grids. Okay, so that's, that's what's gonna create your front face. And then for your receding edges, we're going to select a convenient angle for receding edges on the grid, which is what we're going to be using. We're going to be using 45. So that means for every one of these little diagonals is one unit. Okay? And that's 45 degrees. So then uh, uh, transfer distances from orthogonal axes along receding edges on grid scale use one unit equals one diagonal grid. So what that basically means is that the depth of the block, as we can see on the right-hand side, is 3 plus 5.5, so that's 8.5. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 and a half. Okay, so that's the depth of the block. Okay, so now we have a, a 14 by 17 by 8 and a half size block. Okay, so that's your first step. And you're basically taking that information from the multi-view drawing and transferring it onto your grid paper. So everybody understands what I mean by, so if we have our grid, So this is one diagonal unit. That's another diagonal unit. Okay, so that would be two uh, diagonal units when you're doing the receding edges. And again, just like the isometric and the multi-view, there's the technical way of doing things, and there's a way that you'll uh, develop that will is the best way for you. Some people might want to keep with this very uh, uh, recipe type approach, which is which is fine. Or what you might want to do is, as you get a little bit better at it, with some more practice, you can, uh, you can skip some steps. But it's up, up to you again. Okay, I'm going to move. And most of you are at the stage to go on to the next stage. If not, that's, uh, that's not a problem. We can always come back to it in a second. So the next stage, so once you've got your basic box, I'll let you read over that. Okay, so just like the isometric, we had our axes here. So that's our axes. So any lines that are in our multi-view that are parallel with these lines can be simply transferred from the front or from the, uh, the multi-view directly onto uh, this drawing. 
So you can basically see here, so the front view is always where I would start. So the front view, you know that uh, we have a, a box that's 4.5 uh, by 1. So that means 4.5 by multiplied by 2, because we're using, uh, uh, it's so one unit is equal to two grids. So 4.5 units multiplied by 2, that's uh, uh, nine grids. So if I count over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's 9. And it was by uh, one unit in height, so I multiply it by two grids. That's two, two grids. So I can create that box. Okay, so then you basically can do the, uh, the exactly the same thing uh, even for the receding edge. So if you go to the receding edge, uh, these lines on the receding edge and the, on the base, to do, uh, where are we talking here? To do, So if you're looking for, uh, from this side here, these are all going to be parallel with the axes. So we've got um, this box here. We know it has, it has a, a, a dimension of three. So because it's on a receding edge, uh, three units on the receding edge equals three diagonal diagonals. So one, two, three. And that, there's our three by two box. Okay, so you just keep on going through all those uh, normal features. Okay, does that make sense? Kyle, you look confused. No, I'm just kind of... Yeah, going through that? Yeah. yeah. It's one of these things I could talk to my... Uh, to I'm blue in the face. It's one of these things you have to actually have to do yourself and, and try. We looked at our front view. And any dimension on our front view, we multiply by 2. So if we had, uh, um, this was uh, seven units in width. So we multiply by seven by uh, two grids. So that gave us 14 grids. And our height was 8.5 units. So we multiply that by two grids. That gave us our 17 grids. And then for any of the receding axes or the depth, uh, it was a one-to-one -one ratio. So this had uh, 8.5 units in depth. So that means that the receding edge, this distance here was 8.5. And again, we said that one unit on the receding edge, it's one diagonal. So this is one, two, OK? So that was our first step. So we create our box. Once we create our box, our second step is basically this. So we're basically drawing, any, we're drawing in any normal features that are parallel with our axes. And our axes is basically this. There, there, <coughs> and there. And we know that this angle here is 45 degrees. So the best way that to do it is basically take any, I always start with the front view, start with the front view, put all the dimensions on the front view, again respecting that uh, two units or one unit is equal to two grids for the, any width or any height. And then for any depth, once you get to that point, when you look at the right view, or uh, the right view is probably the easiest, when you add the information for the right view, remember it's only one unit is equal to one uh, diagonal, uh, diagonal grid. Okay? Once you do, have done that, after you've done your second step, your third step is basically to take care of any lines or any features that are not parallel with our uh, axes. Okay, so what we basically did here, that was our second step, is we basically connect these lines here. Okay, we cut that part off, we erase the lines that we don't need, and our end result is that we get our block, our basic uh, uh, clevis block. What you want to do here, again, just like the isometric, there's no hidden lines or, or center lines on it. And that's just the general, uh, uh, general rule. Again, there's uh, uh, reasons why you may break that, but 99% of the time, you're not going to touch those. Again, as a tip, um, these are visible lines. So at the end of the day, what you want to be using is uh, uh, the, your dark, thick pencil, so your 0.9 millimeter uh, pencil, to make sure your lines are thick, dark, and, uh, and very neat. So what I would recommend doing is when you're actually uh, 
sketching or trying to get your basic shape, you use a very light pencil first and then go over it with a dark, uh, uh, thick pencil. And then it will make it easier to erase the, uh, the, the thinner lines. If you've done that, I know some people are and some people aren't, which is, uh, which is fine. There's also um, in your student package, there's this page here. It's A5 uh, practice sketch. So it's basically uh, uh, taking uh, the part that you see here and making it into uh, 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 an oblique view. Okay, so that practice, or if you want, you can start the, the homework as well, which is basically taking uh, uh, A5 oblique view sketch. It's basically taking this multi view and creating uh, uh, oblique, uh, oblique view on this piece of paper here. Okay, so you can do either of those if you're uh, already finished the, what we've got up on the board. Okay, again, people are at different stages, but I'll, I'll keep on moving and there'll be time uh, afterwards to uh, uh, finish up. So once you've basically got your, uh, your lines all set, the next thing you want to take care of is the, the circles or any type of circular feature. So the key with the circular feature is make sure the circular feature, again, is on your front face. If you're using a circular feature that's not on the front face, you've got a problem. Uh, and that's where you do not want to be using uh, uh, oblique uh, uh, projection. That's where you want to use probably an isometric projection. Okay, so always, always, always make sure that your circular face is on the, the front face. And then basically it's the, uh, the method that we've used in the past. Uh, the method that we used in the past in order to create our, um, uh, our, our circle. So remember you box in your uh, uh, the circle fe or the circular feature that you want. The, the, the box is basically the diameter of, uh, uh, of the shape that you want. But again, you want to remember that one unit is equal to uh, the two grids for the front face. So once you've boxed it in, uh, then you create your, uh, um, uh, you draw your lines between each of the corners. And then from there, you're able to create your basic uh, uh, circular sketch. And I just put up a, a reminder here. What I've shown here in, in red is what you want to keep. All the rest is basically construction lines that you would erase at the end. So you, you don't want to see any hidden lines or any center lines or any kind of type of construction lines on your finished product. And the reason, again, is because the whole reason for the oblique projection is to make it look pretty so that you can uh, uh, you could sell, you could use this as a, uh, to show a friend or show a, a colleague so they get a real good idea of what it looks like. It could be used in marketing, it could be used to, uh, in many different things, but basically at the end of the day it's there to look, uh, look good. It's not, it's not technically accurate, but it is there. To, it does look very natural. So basically now we've covered all the basic projection types that you're going to be uh, uh, tested on for this course. So you, you need to know multi-view projections, you need to know isometric projections, and you need to know oblique projections. And uh, uh, somebody asked me about uh, uh, the midterm, so I'll quickly talk about that because that's actually a good, uh, good point to discuss on it. So what you, the material that we've covered right up until right now, that's basically everything that will be on, uh, on the midterm. So you have to be able to, you have to know multi-view projections, you have to know isometric projections, and you have to know oblique projections for the midterm. And that's basically it. The test, or the midterm, will not have anything to do with um, uh, theory per se. It's all practical. Can you actually uh, take a multi-view projection and uh, create an isometric projection? Or can you take a multi-view projection and create an oblique projection? Or can you take uh, an isometric projection and create a multi-view projection? That's all of this. Okay, so what we'll, uh, we'll generally have, there's generally three questions. And uh, uh, so, let's see, I'll write them out for you right now. So here are your options, as I said. So we'll either give you an isometric view, and from that isometric view, we'll ask you to create a multi-view. Or what we'll do is we'll, we'll give you a multi-view, and we'll ask you to create an oblique. Or we'll give you a multi-view multi, and ask you to create an isometric view. So that's basically the, the questions that you can expect on the exam. So there's going to be three, there'll be three questions. Uh, we'll give you these three drawings and we'll say basically create uh, uh, these three drawings for us. Okay? The level of the difficulty of the questions is basically based upon the homework. So the, uh, the, the assignments that you've done, that's what you can expect for the difficulty of the question. So they, they won't be easy. Um, let's see, we have one more. Next week, I'll, uh, remind me next week. It's, it's important. I'll leave a note for myself as well. I'll give you some strategy. Or I'll start talking about it right now because we have some time. The key 
to do in this midterm, you, you can easily know what you're doing on this midterm and actually do really poorly on it because of uh, time management. So what you have to realize, I believe there's, uh, we give you two hours for, uh, for this exam. So what you have to do is take the number, amount of time that you have, so say 120 minutes. There's three questions, so that gives you 40 minutes per question. Okay? You need to, uh, to focus on this. So each of these questions can only take 40 minutes. If at the 40 minute mark that you, you haven't finished your, uh, uh, your multi-view, then you need to say, okay, done. Uh, I know I, might, I didn't get the 100% solution. I might have got a 75% uh, or 60% solution, but I need to move on to these other questions. Because if you get 100% here, and 0% on this question, and 0% on this question, you st at the end of the day, you're gonna fail the, uh, the midterm. Okay, so time management is crucial on this uh, exam. The other thing that's uh, crucial on the exam is take uh, the information that we've given you on the, on the feedback on, the, on your assignments, take that feedback and make sure that you uh, learn from it so you don't make the mistakes on, uh, on the midterm. Also go through, I've already talked about it a couple of times, but in your student package at the very beginning there's, a, um, there's a, a marking guide. Look through that marking guide. That's basically what we use in order to uh, mark. So we will be evaluating things like how thick your lines are, are your, or not how thick, but uh, how neat. And then can we tell the difference between your thick lines and your thin lines? Do you have your center marks on? Do you have your center line or your uh, center marks? Uh, have you put center lines on isometric? Uh, have you put? Uh, that's the type of thing you, you want to look at. Okay. Um, what else can I say about it? Do you guys have any questions for me? So that's basically it. It's, it's not too complicated. It's all very practical. There won't be any true or false questions or any uh, uh, written essays or anything else like that. No? OK. So that's, uh, it's not uh, uh, next week. It's the week after uh, reading week. So the first, uh, when you come back from reading week, uh, the, the first time that you have this class will be, uh, will be doing the midterm. <coughs> okay, so you have one more, one more class if you have some more uh, questions. But the, the next week's class, which is on dimensions, won't be on the, uh, on the midterm. Okay, so we talked about these, uh, these type of projections. We're briefly going to talk about uh, the perspective, very briefly. I'll look, have a read through that, and then we'll, we'll discuss. So basically what this is saying is if I was teaching arts class, this is what we would, uh, uh, this is what we would fo focused on. So artists, people that are trying to show a true rendition of what things look like uh, would use this. Because this is a technical drawing course, we, we do not uh, uh, focus on this. The people that would, would be using this, th that are in industry that we'd be working with are artists, the people that are trying to uh, uh, put package labels on or, or so forth, uh, they would uh, use this type of uh, information. So basically what you see here is uh, the perspective. The big difference is that you have that uh, vanishing point. If you want to think about it, it's like the, the railway tracks uh, going down. Uh, uh, they, they vanish. There's a point where they actually become uh, nothing, which we don't get with, uh, uh, with uh, technical drawings. The other difference is obviously our observers at a, at a finite distance. Okay? That's, as long as you know that, that's, that's fine. As long as you know that that is one type of, uh, uh, of projection that, you, that is available for, uh, to us. So in your student package, you'll see this. This is the A5 uh, practice sketch. This is not for handing in. This is for you just to practice if you, if you want to use it as a, uh, as a practice before you begin the, the homework. What is due next week is this beast, uh, the A5 oblique view. So what you need to do is take this multi-view and convert it into an oblique view on uh, this uh, uh, piece of paper that you have as well. So basically take this multi-view and put uh, an oblique view on this page here. Seems very similar to this question here. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, due next week. Uh, for CAD, as I mentioned, uh, uh, it's a challenging CAD week. Or it's, it's not challenging, or it is challenging, yeah. yeah. The, if you take your time and follow the steps step by step and w watch the video, you should have no problems. But just to be very careful, the, the details matter in, in how you go about this. So make sure you listen very carefully to what, to, what is being said. Okay, so that's, it's a Star Trek symbol. Again, uh, I'll be walking around and the text will be walking around to help you, but uh, uh, just take your time and make sure you listen to the details. With that information, when you, once you've done that, you should have no problems. This actually becomes quite easy doing the, uh, uh, the homework. And there's a tutorial video on how to, uh, how to best uh, tackle that as well. So this is what is uh, due for next week for the CAD. 
That was the CAD from the homework. A again, um, uh, well done. You guys seem to be hoisting in the information from the CAD. That's, uh, that's uh, uh, excellent. Uh, I'll leave this up here as well. What I do want to talk about is this. Okay, those are the missing line exercises. The reason that's up there is, uh, we, the reason we did this exercise to begin with, it's a very challenging exercise. It's probably the most difficult one uh, that we, we give it, and to get, uh, get well done. So if you, didn't get to, uh, if you didn't get five out of five out or four out of five, don't worry, it's, uh, it is challenging. As I said, it took me about a week to, uh, uh, to do when I, was, um, uh, when I did it myself. Granted, I didn't work on it the whole time, but it does take a long time to get, uh, uh, to get perfect. Uh, what I'll do to give you some help is you, the answers are there. Uh, the blocks I put up here as well, so you can take a look at the blocks, and I can also give you some help as well if you, if you want.